Now, before this video starts or anything, I do want to say that I am not a dermatologist, but this is a video about ichthyosis vulgaris and what I use to take care of my skin and some extra tips in case you live with other people. First, I should show you what it even looks like. <laughs> so this is what my hand looks like for everyone else. This is not really <laughs> what their hands look like. Uh, I do have hyperlining on, or hyperlines, whatever you want to call them. On the back of my hands it doesn't really count, but it still is very different from a normal person's type of skin. Uh, I have been doing very well on my skin, so this isn't exactly how it looks all the time. Hopefully right now it looks pretty normal, that's what I'm going for. <laughs> and uh, tattoo wise it doesn't really do anything against them. It is different healing tattoos. My skin, it's not that bad currently, but whenever I pull it or anything, you can see parts where it would start to rip. But so far, it's been pretty good for the past couple days, so not too bad. My last video showing this actually shows what my skin was like back then. Now my skin's a lot better and hopefully <laughs> it can pass as normal skin. Somebody every day will just be walking by and their skin just flakes off <laughs> magically for them and it grows at a times one pace and for me or someone else we could be times five times seven. Um, your skin's just constantly growing and you don't peel it off. <laughs> Not as easily. Um, it usually takes a while for it to start peeling and it, it's a little bit painful. Uh, it is a lot drier. Looks like you got a sunburn most of the time. That, that kind of idea of, is what it is. Um, I have a very minor case, but it still is pretty bad. I still have it cracking and bleeding occasionally and it is a little bit of a pain, but it's not as bad as it could be and I'm really grateful for that but I still have to deal with it on a daily basis so I'm going to tell you what I do uh, daily, weekly, or monthly to help me be able to go throughout the day without having it crack or break. This is basically the lotion that I use ever since high school or middle school which was a really long time ago. I believe it's called Eucerin. What the bottle looks like now, uh, they used to have the cap being blue, like this kind of blue before but they changed the bottle so this is what you're going to be looking for now. The important part is on the back. It used to be on the front of the bottle but not anymore. Right there that is very important. You don't want that light feel, you want that rich feel. <laughs> on it so when you get it on your hand it doesn't move or slide around. So it's basically what you want. You want some really fucking thick lotion. This lotion every morning and night and after every shower I will use this. You go through this <laughs> A lot. I have a shit ton of bottles at my house, but I highly recommend this. Like, I recommend it so much. What I want to talk about is wash. Um, people yell at me a lot. I do use Dial soap still, and the reason why I use this is because sometimes my skin breaks or does little cuts and you can't tell. Um, like, maybe it doesn't hurt that bad, or you just pass it off as like, oh, it might just be like a little tear, but nothing like bleeding. But it could be a cut, so sometimes I do wash my body with Dial hand soap. Antibacterial. Uh, microbial is a little bit better. It happens to a lot of people. It's happened to me probably a, a couple times. You will get a cut on your body and you will not notice and it could get infected. Um, because you don't notice it, you don't, you're not taking care of it, you're applying all these lotions and creams and all this shit. So. I do recommend using this every now and then. Now for washing my face, this is right here by Neutrogena. That's how I take off my makeup and everything with this and it doesn't really leave my skin too bad. I do prefer the wipes over this because they do some exfoliation. So this is just to take off makeup. It's something like this, you want something deep moisturizing, not really any kind of fragrance or you know, something that's gentle also for your skin so you can get a gentle body wash, but you don't want any of those like basic like, oh, I'm gonna go to Bath and Body Works. Like, you can't do anything like that, so I do recommend something like this. This is also my neutralizer. Now you're probably wondering why I need a neutralizer. It would be this little bottle. I need a lot of it, 
and it's very hard to find. If you go to the doctors, they're probably gonna prescribe this for you anyway. I'll tell you the ingredient inside of it and why I chose it. Basically, what you need, you need, <laughs> is urea. That will help you so much. Usually people will apply it to their elbows, their knees, the bottom of their feet, but you will use it on your whole body. It does leave, I don't know how to explain it. It does feel like a little powdery after you use it and it does feel, it just feels odd. It's definitely not a lotion, but here's the thing. I apply this all over my body. I wait 20 minutes and might sting just a little bit, but that for me is good. 20%, which is crazy. Uh, usually you only find 10%, but 20% in this is a fucking bomb. I went to Walgreens for it in California. They had it, but in New Mexico they didn't. So I don't really know how to recommend it. So I'm just going to tell you the, what you need, the urea, like I said before. Um, when I get prescribed, like if I go to the doctor for something, it's basically the same thing as urea, but it's 40%, and that makes my skin bomb as fuck. <laughs> this is just 20%, so it's not as strong and it doesn't do that much, but for something that you can just buy at the store, this is fucking bomb. <laughs> and it's really hard to find something so nice as 20% rather than just being 10% or 5%. For I only put this on like for 10 to 15 minutes and then I will put on this and it you feel so moisturized after you apply both of these and usually I will do this for 15 minutes, apply this and then I can wait maybe even three days before having to use this again but I'm still using this every morning, night and after I use the shower so this is still in use but this is a lifesaver. You really want to get your hands on that if is a problem for you but i am not a dermatologist thing that will become your friend and is definitely for people with <laughs> ichthyosis is a petty rock you probably already know that the petty rock is your only fucking friend you use it on your face you use it on your stomach you use it on your arms your legs everywhere of your entire body every single time you shower which should be every day. This suck sometimes because you will probably exfoliate a little bit too much and might look like you ate shit on fucking gravel and have like a mark, but uh, for something that saves your skin and saves it from having a giant crack going all the way down your body and is extremely deep, I would much rather go just a little bit too hard with the petty rock and be safe. Um, it doesn't happen all the time, I'm a lot more skilled now, but I do highly recommend petty rock for exfoliating your body. Some things that don't really involve any of those products that you can do every day other than those. Um, they do recommend that you take a bath at least every night for an hour exfoliating your body. So, okay, yeah, probably need a petty rock for that. Uh, those showers really help, or those baths really help with um, getting rid of that feeling of, I. it's hard to describe it, but kind of like you have saran wrap all over your body but the saran wrap every time you move it it hurts you just feel very like constricted and after the bath you usually feel like you can move you can sit without worrying that your back is gonna fucking rip living with other people and let's say you get prescribed urea if you put this on someone else's skin that does not have ichthyosis it will burn so keep that in mind i always use like a, a neutralizer to help if i have a partner and I, I poke their hand and if this is still on it, it usually will burn a little bit. I'll leave like a little red mark on their skin. So keep that in mind. You want to keep your partner safe. That means touching door handles. Uh, if you're still waiting for this to dry, maybe walk around with a towel on your hand to open up door handles or touch glasses or, you know, whatever that other people could touch. Um, other than that, I usually just keep this on. I don't really move from my area. <laughs> I neutralize my skin and then I start moving around in the house. You will have to clean a lot more. Um, vacuuming, dusting, washing your bed. You're gonna have to do that a shit ton. Uh, you should have t-shirts that you wear. Whenever you're waiting for this like on your body for 10 to 15 minutes, you should be able to wear clothes that you just don't give a fuck about and you can throw in the washer whenever you want. And you want to wash those clothes alone, or maybe you want a separate washer and dryer to put those clothes in there because the products might still be in the washer and dryer or might even like 
ruin the washer and dryer. I have gone through maybe two washers because my products did fuck up the machine a couple times. So you want to be careful with that. For the bed situation, you do want to wash that at least every other night. I know people do it every now and then, but you can buy multiple like bed sheets and then, you know, have a rotation of like clean and dirty. <laughs> Some people do vacuum their bed sheets, which is interesting and very odd. I have never heard of that, but I, I read online that some people do vacuum their bed sheets. So you could do that as well. I prefer just washing it because you might have some product on there and a vacuum can't really suck up product from a sheet. So I prefer washing it. Sometimes the products that you buy for your skin or that your doctor prescribes you that you get will ruin clothes that you have so i also want to make that note that you will go through clothes really fast and sometimes your favorite t-shirt will get fucked up or your favorite pants when you go outside you cannot sweat so usually you get like a little spray bottle like this big and you fill it with water and whenever it gets really hot out just spray mist on you and you just made sweat which is really nice and i am very jealous of people liking sweat that's the one thing that i really hate by this is going outside in the sun you basically can't go out in the sun at all it really fucking sucks um because if you're out in the sun and you didn't really take that good of care of your skin you can rip like some there will be times where i just walk outside it's it's like a hundred degrees out and i can just feel like like my back skin it's just like cracking and breaking as i'm walking and it only takes 20 seconds and I already have like three giant cracks on my back and I have to take care of it for like two months to make sure it's okay. So I usually avoid the sun. If you live in a humid place, that's usually really fucking bomb. Or if you go to the beach, yeah, just take care of it. Have your little sweat bottle thing and yeah, it makes life a lot easier. <laughs> tattoo wise, I'm totally fine for getting tattoos. As you can see, this is my very first tattoo I got. I got it was when I was 18, I'm 21 now. Still good, and I haven't gotten any touch-ups for this tattoo. Since your skin does get a little bit drier, you might have to apply lotion a little more often. Um, but other than that, getting tattoos and taking care of it isn't that bad. For piercings, I will have to say that it makes piercings and healing piercings a lot harder since you have a tendency to crack the skin and let it break. Since you already have a hole on your face, a cracking, an opening, it does make it a little more difficult when you have a piercing and you can't put any of those products on it. I wouldn't really recommend any of those but this. <laughs> um, so it's very hard, but for healing piercings and having this condition, you have to baby it 20 times more. It is very hard <laughs> to heal any piercing with this skin condition because, you know, it, your skin could do anything. It could be random. So really baby your skin before you get a piercing. Make sure it's fucking perfect. Um, so that first week or so, or the first couple days of healing, it doesn't do anything crazy and cause anything to go wrong. If anything does go wrong, I do recommend with tattoos or piercings to always visit your artist or tell them and tell them what the problem is, see what you can do, because maybe your piercing's doing pretty good, but it's getting a little dry in the area, it's flaking a little bit, and you really need to, like, put something on it to take care of it. They're gonna tell you what you're able to do at that healing point um, because not everybody's piercings heal at the same time. So it's very important that you go visit them, uh, tell them what you want to do to that area, mattering on what product you need. <laughs> of course, I do not want you to use urea on your fucking piercing. That would burn it like a motherfucker, but please just baby it before you get a piercing and it will help with it so much. But you can heal piercings. I have. I've had 20 and up piercings and I have 20 or so sitting on my body right now. I just want to put in a little message right here, like if you're ever getting bullied for it, it's, it'll pass. It happens a lot. People don't understand. They're scared. They're nervous, but they don't know that it doesn't affect them at all. They're totally okay. And under that skin, you do have beautiful, normal skin. You have like soft skin. Sometimes your skin is softer than um, everybody else's skin. If you can really take care of it, your skin will be like perfect. It's very hard. There's also support groups um, online if you need that. I do recommend that you try your best to get through it, uh, whether you have bullying or not, or there's a struggle, or there's pain every day. 
it is worth it if you work for it. That's all I'm going to do for today's video. If you have any questions, I might make another video on this. You can leave any question in, uh, regarding Ethiosis vulgaris. Uh, if you have someone and you don't really know how to talk to them about it, you can totally link them to these videos and see if it helps them. I have another video explaining my experience and that's mostly about like bullying and stuff. This one's more about how to take care of it at home. So you can totally do that if you want. But I'm going to let this video go for now. Uh, I do have a new merch store. You can look down below and I also have Twitch. Or if you want to follow me on any of my social medias, it is down below. And I will see you guys in the next one. I love you so much. I hope you're having an amazing day, an amazing journey. And I will see you next time. Bye. Yung.